I was at Agenda 2000, and uh, one of the people who was there was Craig Mundy, who is some kind of high mucky muck at Microsoft. I think uh, Vice President of Consumer Products or something like that. And uh, I hadn't actually met him. I, I, I uh, bumped into him in an, at an elevator, in an elevator. And uh, I looked at his badge and said, ah, I see you work for Microsoft. And he looked back at me and said, oh, yeah, and what do you do? And I thought he seemed just a, a, sort of a tad dismissive. I mean, here's the archetypal you know, guy in a suit looking at a scruffy hacker. And so I gave him the thousand-yard stare and said, I'm your worst nightmare. People that look at, casually look at open source free software and think, well, because you're supposed to share and do it for people's goodwill, does that seem somewhat communist? What's your response? Absolute nonsense. It makes me really angry when people do that. Communism is an ideology that forces people to share. If you don't share, you get thrown in jail or killed. You, you go to a gulag and end up in a mass grave with a bullet in the back of your head. Open source is not communism because it doesn't force people. If you walk into an executive's office and you say, free software, okay, if you're lucky, the response you'll get is something like, hmm, hmm, uh, free software must be cheap, shoddy, worthless. Uh, and if you're not lucky, it has uh, associations with, uh, with the Free Software Foundation's wholesale attack on intellectual property rights, which regardless of what you think about the ethics of that, it's lousy marketing. It's not something that, that uh, businesses want to hear. I wrote a paper called The Cathedral and the Bazaar, which was my observations, my anthropological analysis of what it was that made the open source world work. We didn't call it that then. We were still using the term free software primarily. So it was my observation of what made the free software world work and why we were able to produce extremely high quality software in spite of constantly violating all of the standard rules of software engineering. In that paper, I was setting up a contrast between two different styles of development, two opposed styles of development. One, which is the conventional closed development style, which I, I called the cathedral style. In that one, you have tight specification of objectives, um, small project groups which are run in a fairly hierarchical, authoritarian manner, uh, and you have long release intervals. On the other hand, what I ident identified as happening in the Linux world was a much more peer-to-peer, -peer decentralized market or bazaar-like style in which you have very short release intervals and constant solicitation of feedback from people who are formally outside the project. A very intense, intense peer review process. And the startling thing was that the more I looked at this, the more it seemed that trading away all the supposed advantages of conventional closed development for that one single advantage of massive independent peer review actually seemed to win, actually seemed to get you good results.